Hey, what's up, everybody? We're going to jump right in today. We're going to start off with several new stencils that we have. Uh, this is a zombie stencil. Uh, I'm using candy green. I'm using wicked uh, white, wicked black, auto air candy green. I'm spraying at about 35 uh, PSI. I'm doing a very, very light uh, dusting of black. Uh, my paint is reduced one to one, one part uh, paint, one part reducer. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, <coughs> pardon me, because I have several stencils that I'm going to lay out for you today. But I'm going to just give you a quick run through of the new stencils that we have. And you can find these stencils um, on our eBay store. And there's a link at the end, and there'll also be a link uh, throughout this video that you can follow. To our eBay store or uh, to our Facebook page either one you can always find us and uh, find these uh, stencils readily available this particular stencil is an old G skull he has on a baseball cap with the letter G on it he's got a nice grimace or you can just consider the G to be uh, basically a Grim Reaper G if you want you know because even the Grim Reaper is an old G so uh, again, like I said, we're dusting this off very lightly with the black. Um, the reason you want to do a light dusting is so that you can always come back and add more black to enhance the shadow and make it look less like a stencil. And these are uh, our three guy skull set. Uh, I'm going to paint two of them on the left of this particular uh, layout. And then I'm going to spray the other on the right side. So what I was previously saying about uh, doing a light dusting is so that your lines aren't too harsh. Uh, the darker you spray your black, the more it's going to look like a stencil. Uh, and it leaves uh, less room for you to do some freehand touch-up work. So, you know, like I said, go in nice and light, then come back with black. Um, after you'd spray the stencil so you can go back in and add some shadows uh, make those lines look softer or uh, more contoured however you need uh, to get your end result um, the next stencil I have is a is a new textured stencil uh, it's different than our texture series one this is texture series two um, it will allow you uh, to add, you know, texture. <laughs> You're going to need to texturize your stencil work so that it, uh, it, it just adds to that realistic look. So, uh, as I was saying previously about shadowing and shading and not leaving those lines, as you can see, I'm going over my stencils now with black and a freehand. And I'm adding... Uh, shadow where shadow should be I'm adding some tone around the cheekbones around the eyes uh, you know wherever there was an original line from the stencil I kind of just dust them off a little bit with some freehand work it, it just gives uh, the stencil more realism which is what you want to do that way, when somebody looks at it, they can go, wow, man, you really that's some really awesome work. Yeah, it's a stencil, but when you add your own flavor to it or your own work to it, you, you pretty much can bring it to life. Uh, I'm not going to go into, like I said, uh, a full detail because if I was, uh, there would be a lot more involved. I would have other stencils and other tools to help me get the lining that I want to uh, actually do some highlights and some shadowing and different shades different colors I would bring in um, but this is just a general uh, detailing so you guys can at least get some idea of what you can do with these stencils so um, as I complete this dusting uh, and as you can see I'm going around the outlines uh, I'm going to bring in this new texture stencil and uh, 
it's great. I mean, you can literally just go in into the bones and just randomly spray in different uh, different uh, textures. Uh, this helps out so much when you're ready to get to that next level uh, with your spraying, especially if you take one of these skull stencils, you outline it nice and light you go in and you do some shadowing and some shading and you do some highlights and then you come in with this textured stencil you will really bring your skull to the next level it'll pop off of your work it's gonna look like yeah it's got bone it's got cracks in it it's got you know it's got a feeling to it and because you're doing it with uh, different shades of black and gray and white you really really change your work so that's something that you really really want to take a look at so uh, what's up next is I have a hologram a holographic uh, uh, surface here which is basically a planet um, or an orb or you know whatever you want but as you get closer to the edges the squares get smaller and rounder to simulate uh, a sphere, uh, a, an orb, which is which is fantastic. There's so many applications that you could use this for. Also, you know, there's no limit to what the imagination can come up with that you could use this for. Me, I'm just going to use it in the background, you know, to to break up what's going on with the skulls. As far as I'm concerned, it's like a it's like a, a, a cubic planet, or you know, some type of uh, orb that needs to be uh, inserted. So you see, I kind of use the dark around the edges because of course with something round as it as it turns as it you know as you go around the edges of it it gets darker towards the center depending on where your light source is you know you can you can add uh, different textures to that that circle as well uh, these stencils are uh, a gear stencil set uh, that we also are going to have available on our eBay store. It's just a nice group of gears. Um, when you add gears, you pretty much can, for instance, if you want to make a tear and you want to put gears inside of it, if you want to put gears inside of the mouth of a skull, or if you want to just turn your regular uh, skull setting into a biomechanical feeling, that's what these gears will do. Now, uh, we also have what we call the wild honeycomb stencil on our eBay store but this one right here is more of uh, a gamma energy type cube because of the way they're broken up so uh, you know they're all different sizes they take on a, a shape almost like a like a, a gamma energy uh, if you know anything about the old comic books they used to use those types of uh, uh, cubes and shapes to get um, different textures and different feelings to uh, to the comic industry this right here is a uh, a different steel plate it's just a bunch of uh, arrows pointing in different directions but it really really has a nice texture uh, and there's a lot of different things you can do with this as well so it, you can see just from what I've been laying in this particular um, picture that literally just laying a whole bunch of stencils in different areas, different textures. Uh, you, know, you got you got the cube, you got gears, you got you got the um, the the steel plate. You got these different skulls going on. Um, you have a zombie dead center. I mean, there's so much going on and you can see it's literally only taking me minutes so if you were to do this and really go into like some ridiculous uh, color schemes you could really bring uh, any RC body or anything that you're painting sh to life I mean really make it jump so uh, right now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm adding some white uh, on this candy green with all of the black and the shadows and the shades what this white is going to do of course is give me my greens it's going to give me my uh, my my highlights and my texture uh, opposite of my shadows and my dark spaces um, as you can see I'm not just spraying white and filling in all of the areas 
I'm doing highlighted areas. I'm doing some light fogging of certain areas. And because I know that I'm getting overspray from my brush, I'm really not uh, afraid as much as to where this white is landing. Um, because I know I have my black and I know I have my shadows that are sprayed all over this, this piece of art that I'm working on. But I also know where my light source is. Uh, I have a light source basically in the top left corner coming over into a shadow. I have some coming from the bottom right coming up. So I have multiple light sources and you know, you see I'm really laying the white on is where I want my light source to be brightest. So I want those greens and those areas to be brighter, to be sharper. And the areas that I didn't spray over or I lightly fogged, they're going to look much, much darker as to recess the work. To give the skull some shape and make it round, to give the globe some shape and make it round so you have some depth of feel. You have that dark part of the skull that's in the back in the shadow. And you have those highlighted areas that's out front and the light is hitting it. It turns your work into 3D, which is exactly uh, what you want to do. So I'm going to back this in black. I'm using uh, the Wicked Black, like I said, reduced one to one. And it doesn't have to have a lot of coats because it's just a thin sheet of plastic that I'm spraying on so you guys can get an idea of uh, you know how this will look. And again, like I said, this is a real simple no real heavy detail, just some basic shadowing and highlights, but I can take it to a whole nother level and there's just no end to what you can do with these stencils. Uh, and once you figure that out uh, and the more you spray with it, you'll find that there's more that you can do. These are 100% laser cut stencils, so they're very, very nice. I use a very thin mylar so that you can maneuver around your RC bodies and you know you can just wash them and reuse them over and over and over again which is fantastic so uh, here's the end result um, and as you can see like I said you can see the highlighted bright spots uh, like in the eyes of the zombie and the teeth how they pop out more than the face does the face kind of sits back um, parts of the cheeks uh, part of the globe you can see where I hit the white really hard and where I just let the shadows do the work but I mean if I really went into the detail with the gears and the shadows and the textures you can see the textures from the textured stencil in their in the skulls um, the directional steel plate over the top I mean is they're just some really great stencils here so go to our eBay store the link will follow this any questions, hit us on our Facebook link too. Thanks for watching, guys.